Good evening and welcome to a special meeting of the Northampton School Committee uh, on December 5th, 2012. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz, Chair of the School Committee, and I will begin by asking the clerk to call the roll. Mayor David Narkowitz. Present. Mr. Alden Bourne. Here. Ms. Lou Duvall. Present. Mr. Michael Flynn. Mr. Downey Meyer. Present. Ms. Lisa Minnick. Here. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Ms. Stephanie Pick. Here. Mr. Andrew Shelfo. Here. Mr. Ed Zahowski. Present. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Thank you. And uh, tonight is a special meeting. We have one item on our agenda, um, and it is to um, essentially have the discussion that we were unable to have at our last meeting uh, because of concerns about open meeting law. So the one item on our agenda is under reports and recommendations, and it's a discussion, uh, change in start times at elementary, middle, and high schools, including the possibility of negotiating an additional 20 minutes to the elementary school day. And I will turn the floor over to the Vice Chair. So, um, so the, the first thing I would say is you're noticing that there does not say vote. This is strictly a discussion tonight. Oh. And I, I think it'll become clear why we're not. But one of the things that I would like to say is I've become a little uncomfortable with um, our talking about the additional 20 minutes at the elementary school time because it is so tied with negotiating with our unions. And I actually think that um, the way I'm feeling about it now is that it is not respectful to the process of negotiation or respectful to the individuals, the constituents of our unions to be m trying to make a decision that is um, um, so closely tied with how, how they respond to us and we respond to them in a negotiation. And so I want to make sure that we are not negotiating in public. So I think it's okay to talk about the merits of additional um, learning time for elementary students. I don't think it's appropriate to talk about um, how we're going to negotiate that or, or make any kind of a decision about start time that is um, dependent on a change in the elementary day um, until negotiations are complete. Um, I, I'm, I'm really concerned. I really feel that the negotiating team um, has been working diligently with the unions to, um, um, to improve our relationship, to engender trust and respect, and I really don't want to do anything that could harm that. And I, I actually think that we've probably gone a little further than we should have, and I, I want to I would like to see a stop in our tracks around that just part of the discussion. Um, I want to be able to go back to the negotiating table without them feeling that we're putting pressure on them before we've had the discussion. We should have learned that last year. And I, I just want to make sure that we um, are mindful of that. Is, is that clear? Is what I'm saying clear? Mm. Let me, uh, I may jump in. I agree with you. Uh, when this idea entered the proposals in the summer, I talked to Sharon Carlson, I remember talking about it at school committee, talked about it in the public forum, that these later start proposals would be pending successful negotiations with the teachers union, and it could come about in a variety of ways. In the extra 20 minutes were not determined to be any certain type of minutes, whether they're going to be non-instructional minutes or core academic instructional minutes or special instructional minutes, but there would be uh, negotiations that would then help us decide how the elementary day would be extended if it were to be extended. Uh, though, uh, you know, with communication, though I feel I communicated that if everybody didn't hear it, then I didn't communicate it very well. And though I, I felt um, that I had put it out there in the public, there were a large number of teachers and parents in the elementary schools who felt that they hadn't heard the message. And I wouldn't want anybody to think that uh, we were doing something without trying to inform as many people as possible. So I do feel that we should step back, um, enter into negotiations with our teachers. We may or may not be adding 20 minutes to the elementary school day, but in the course of that uh, discussion, there will be more involvement of teachers and parents, and I feel that that is better for our process if we were to postpone this while we do that. I thank you for that statement, and I just want to make sure that you know that um, I would like the school committee to share that responsibility with you because we've had, most of us have been at the table longer than you have, <laughs> and yeah. we know the history here, so um, we should have stopped ourselves sooner than we did. Um, having said that, the purpose for tonight, the way I see it, is for us to have 
a, um, a, a lengthier discussion about all of what we've been hearing for the last weeks, months, years about um, start time at the, at the high school and how it impacts other levels. Um, we've gotten a lot of emails. Um, I'm going to make a blanket apology. For a while, I was really keeping up with responding to my emails, and I, and I got way behind. And so please, nobody feel slighted by the fact if, they, if I haven't responded, because I haven't recently at all. And um, But um, this really gives us the chance to have an open discussion about all of the various issues that we've heard from people who um, are on all sides of this issue to talk, you know, to see where we stand on these things. Um, knowing that we're not making a decision tonight, but to have the discussion to figure out where we need to go from here. Um, I've, um, and you know, figure out what our next steps are and see if we can even, even begin to talk about any kind of a timeline. Well, one of the things uh, you were going to do at the last meeting, but you weren't able mm -hmm. to do it, was to report back on the most recent forum. I don't know, is right. that something that would be appropriate for him to do tonight? Part of that discussion? Or? Absolutely. Okay. I can do that. What was um, assigned to me in October was to take Proposal 3 and Proposal 4 out and get some feedback on it. Um, now, with Proposal 3 and Proposal 4 being so tied into, they're impossible without the 20 minutes. So um, we really have to pull those options off the table. However, to give you feedback on that, I did hold a meeting with the teachers at the high school after school. And I had uh, 37 teachers show up, which is about half of the teachers, um, to discuss this. I asked them to share their opinion with me on Proposal 3 or Proposal 4. And out of the 37, I had 28 teachers ask me to please have no change to the high school start time. Two voted for Proposal 3 at 8.15, and seven voted for Proposal 4 to start at 8.30. So there was a large majority of the teachers who were absolutely not in favor of voting on either three or four, they wanted the start time to stay the same. Uh, I would have to say that they were actually pretty passionate about it. Um, they, said, they said to me, Brian, doesn't the school committee know where we stand on this? And I tried to say that I communicate to them. And I also, some of them had come to public forums, but not all of them. I encouraged them to do that, to have their uh, thoughts and voices heard. And one said, well, if the school committee votes it, can you veto it? I said, no, I don't have veto power over the school committee, but they wanted me to share with you how strongly they feel against moving the high school start time. I took the proposals to the administrative leadership team, and once again, they stood very strong against any change, uh, not wishing to vote for proposal three or four, but uh, supporting no change at all. We held a discussion. I know uh, some people will say it was a survey and a poorly done survey, and I apologize for that, but it was a discussion and advisory. Uh, with our students, which is what we do in advisory, talk about school-wide issues and current issues. And uh, we had 598 students uh, in advisory, and of those, when we asked them about keeping the schedule the same or voting on option, uh, proposal three or proposal four, we had 421 or uh, two-thirds of the students asked us to keep the start time the same. And a small percentage, 151, voted for proposal three, and only 26 students voted for proposal number four, the 8.30 start time. So I guess what this means is that, you know, still our teachers are not, are, are clearly not asking for a change to the high school start time. Matter of fact, they stand pretty strongly against it. Our administrative team still supports leaving it alone and focusing more on, you know, as I said, the higher priorities in our district. Uh, literacy, math, technology, and of course today, uh, financial news of how we're going to keep our uh, district uh, and be fiscally responsible with our school district, uh, given the news that we had today on the state budget, and of course moving forward. Um, these are the priorities that we <coughs> would ask uh, to spend our time on in order to strengthen and improve our district. And so I bring the student numbers up because some of the, some of the persuasive arguments are well, we're doing this for the students. And yet the students are saying, well, thanks for thinking of us, but we really would like to leave it the way that it is. And so at the public forum, when I took it out to the community and asked people to speak, um, it was a fairly well-attended forum. And I know six of you were at that forum uh, witnessing the comments and the interactions firsthand. And I would say that it was about evenly split. It seemed to me that there were about as many voices asking us to keep it the same as there were to make a change, even though the proposed question was, would you like proposal number three or proposal number four? 
um, people are still speaking out against changing the start time. Um, when you met with the teachers at the high school and you said that, 30, that 28 of the 37 were opposed to it, did they talk about their reasoning? Did, what did you hear from them about why? Um, the same reasons that you hear at many of the public forums. It has to do with they believe that the students are academically successful with the current schedule. Um, they believe that the after school time for teachers to assist students before they go off to practices or advisory is valuable. And uh, they just feel that we have a very successful and effective high school with our current schedule. Are there other questions for the superintendent about this? Did we, this, I know that you have this memo. Is this something that we want to include in the record? There was a question uh, from a school committee member about asking for some specifics on athletics from Jim Miller. Uh, Jim Miller wrote a very nice uh, email to me outlining his perspective on it. Um, just the highlights, he's in favor of keeping the start time at 7.30. However, he's able to support a late start time as late as 8 o'clock. It would be difficult for him to schedule later, and he lists the reasons why there. I've given this to all of the school committee members here. I've shared it with the public, and if anyone else is interested in the copy, I'd be happy to share it with you. Okay, so is there any, um, any, any questions or discussion about uh, where we are on this this evening? Mr. Moore. Yeah, I have a feeling that we need to separate the discussion about start times into two parts because every conversation I've had with anybody about it, whether proponents or opponents, there's sort of two distinct categories, and they're really, analytically, one comes first before the second. And the, the, um, the first one is, is whether or not there are benefits to a later start time. And when people question that, then, you know, if, if there aren't benefits, then that's right, this should stand right now. Um, and then the second question is, is what are the other consequences besides the benefits of a later start time? And whether or not, and how severe are they? What are they actually? I think there's a lot of doubt about it. I understand why that would be. I mean, it's, it, it's uh, the system doesn't change quickly or nimbly, and it needs to change maybe more quickly and nimbly to respond to um, problems. Um, so I think they're really two separate things. And, and, and when we cross over, and it becomes a very difficult conversation when, it's, when you mix those two parts. So I wonder if we could maybe start with the first one about the benefits or the lack thereof. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ball? Um, I understand that it's two-thirds, roughly, that support no change but having had a daughter um, who I looked into the circadian rhythm long before I was on the school committee because I had a teenage daughter who's now in her 20s um, that was just horrible in the morning just horrible and those extra 15 minutes anytime I could eat them out I could see how it affected her now if it's not going to affect 67 percent of the people that's okay I don't see that's going to be adverse to them but the, the one-third that it does affect, it's a very important one-third. Um, I mean, it, my daughter was tardy like 60 times. Her attitude was horrible unless she slept. She just can't get them out of bed at that time and have her function. And, and she was an A student except for in her first period class. They had to end up um, accommodating with phys ed or something else because her brain just didn't work that way. And when my son was in second grade, I had a teacher say, well, some kids just get lost in the crack. And I looked at her and I said, well, if you change that to some kids to your son's getting lost in the crack, it's just not quite so palatable. And even though 67% feel that change isn't of benefit, if one third of them do believe that change is of benefit and it does increase their scores and their student performance, then we're doing the best for all our students. I actually think, um, just to go back to what Howard said, I think that, that that makes sense. There are different issues here. 
And I mean, we've we've heard about research. We've heard from people on both sides. I, I think that the that the research talking about start time is just overwhelming about the benefits for kids. That doesn't. I mean, that doesn't seem to be where any of us have argued. Except a number of people again at every comment session have have either suggested that it's not true what you just said. The research is overwhelming, or have suggested that it doesn't matter. So it's that, it, that it really has no effect on student performance, and I think um, so. I think we need to have a discussion because mm -hmm. otherwise, otherwise, you know, really, if if if, if I mean, I, again, I don't think it's really up for elected officials to decide what is pretty objectively, I think, true. What you're saying, but I think the research is clear. But I think we need to have a full airing of why we think that research is clear. So. Um, I, I think I've been pretty clear that I support a later start time at the high school, and, and that's that's not changed. I'm concerned about making sure if we make a decision like that, that we do it in a way that doesn't um, antagonize our staff or families or whatever, but and and that we're really clear about the, why we're making the decisions that we make. So um, I'm not in favor of this because my kids are because they weren't. Um, I, I'm not in favor of this because, as some people suggest, that I feel pressure because of advocates. That's, that's not what um, helps me make my decision. Um, I do listen to what everybody has to say. Um, but as a parent and as a health professional, I look at, I look at that data and it's, it's indisputable to me. And um, when I hear that you know we're already a successful school, yeah, there's a, a great percentage of our students who are already very successful, but does that mean that we can't improve? No. Um, are there kids who we know whose needs are not getting met because of this? We, I think we know that to be true. Um, I think that for the, for the kids who are saying, first of all, in terms of the advisory, <coughs> my understanding is that it was presented differently in, a, in every group. I don't think that, that um, the teachers were trained to present it in a, an objective particular way. So while I understand that it's that it seems like overwhelming data, um, I have to kind of take it with a grain of salt because of, of how I've heard it reported that these advisories were led. And you know my understanding is that teachers who have a strong bias one way or another may have tried to influence students and that there wasn't really a full discussion. Um, so it's, it's hard it's hard to know that's that's not um, data that I, f I feel is very reliable and I'm not sure how much the kids really understand the, all the, the issues and the ramifications and um, especially now that we're going to you know have to change how we're looking at the proposals if we're not talking about um, elementary time. So um, you know I, I'm completely convinced by the data. What I'm not convinced by, uh, about the research on, on a later start time for kids. Um, what I'm not convinced about is um, the best way to go about presenting that to our staff to to um, to increase buy-in, because if we don't have buy-in, that first year is going to be pretty miserable. I know once you know any change is going to be miserable for some <coughs> people, and then after a while people adjust. But I don't want to be making decisions for our administrators and our staff where there is so little buy-in. Um, in terms of the administrators, my understanding was is that they're not opposed to a later start time at the high school. They're opposed to a change, they're, they're opposed to a decision that affects other, the other schools. That's what Nancy Atha said. Yeah. Um, and that's actually what so, Leslie Wilson yeah, said I also. Leslie said it too. Yeah. Um, when they were standing there together, yeah. she said, we're all in favor of the high school starting later, but we, we don't like the way it's impacting the middle school mm -hmm. with these plans. Mm -hmm. So I actually haven't heard, are the administrators opposed to the change for to just the part about high school kids starting later, or are they opposed to the way it's being proposed right now? That's a difference mm -hmm. to me. I could ask them that question directly. D d is that clear what I'm, what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, their position, their stance on it changed. I mean, as, as it came, they, I felt that we had more support from Leslie um, Wilson and from Nancy Athis and others before <coughs> and then as time has gone and we have proposals <coughs> to affect other schools, um, people have pulled back. So I would think that that would be a correlation. So just going back to Howard's original comment about separating the issues. So um, if, we're, if, if, if we 
you know, we can discuss the research more or how people feel about it. But I think that this is a time where we can really vent all of our questions and concerns about what the consequences are. And, um, you know, so what does happen to <coughs> time with teachers after the end of the school day? Um, you know, are teachers, will teachers be available either before school or after school? How does that work? What does actually happen um, to sports? What does, I mean, I think that we're pretty clear about the Smith, no matter where we go in terms of the time, there are gonna be some classes that are affected and some positively and some negatively. But like, what are all the specific issues that people have been bringing to us that they're concerned about that we haven't had an open discussion about yet? I, so I, I think that's part of what we could be using tonight for. <clears throat> I, what I'm concerned about and what has bothered me is that I don't have a good handle on what the extent is of the problem that we're facing. We've heard a lot of stories and, and accounts of people who've had trouble getting kids up for school. We've also heard uh, the statistic more than once from Mr. Harrell about the number of kids who may be falling asleep in class. But, but that question was based, I think the question was, do you often fall asleep in class? And the choices were yes, no, and sometimes. And I don't know how you can sometimes often fall asleep in class, so I, so I don't know what that, what that adds up to. Um, at the same time, I do think that there is, a, there is a debate in the medical community about how much sleep teenagers need. You know, there's um, studies that will say that eight to 10 hours is needed or is it nine hours, or is it seven hours? You know, so I, I don't think it's as, as settled as you might think. Um, I was having, I contacted a professor at the <coughs> University of California, San Diego, who's a sleep expert, and, and he pointed me to a study that said in Japan, people who sleep seven hours a night are healthier than people who sleep longer. You know? So, so I, I don't know, I'm looking for something to kind of, to, to point me one way or the other. Um, there's also a debate um, about what makes sleep difficult for people. You know, is it the fact that it's just a circadian rhythm? I don't mean just a circadian rhythm, but is it the circadian rhythm? Is it what they're doing before they go to bed? Is it the consistent or inconsistent times at which they wake up or go to sleep? You know, these are all factors that go into it. Um, so as I find myself thinking about these things, I, I wonder if we haven't gone astray a little bit. Um, in the sense that I completely acknowledge and I'm, I'm, I'm on board with the philosophical idea that, that having kids get a good night's sleep is a lofty goal. I think that's great. Um, but what I think happens is we started off this whole thing by saying kids need to get more sleep or a better night's sleep. The problem is the high school start time, so let's figure out how to change the high school start time. I find myself wondering if if we might want to pay some attention to the other end of the equation and say, is there a way that we can educate our kids on how to get a better night's sleep, period? And then that's something that could help them now and, and as they go to college and as they become adults. In other words, this idea of sleep hygiene, you know, how do you uh, get yourself in the best shape to be able to get the best amount of sleep, is that something that we should be exploring? Um, if we choose to explore it, and I've been in contact with the same Dr. Kripke in San Diego, and, and he pointed, he mentioned a study that says you can see some of the same benefits from a later start time by just having a <clears throat> couple of forums with stu students on how to get a better night's sleep. So as I think about it, I say, well, is that something we should take a look at? Because it doesn't really cost anything. Um, it doesn't involve the change of a start time. And also, I don't know exactly if we decided on next week that we were going to change the start time, when would we be able to implement that? It would be a few months off, if not longer. It would also be something that we could probably do right away to start addressing the, the need that some people, some students are exhibiting to get a better night's sleep. So I offer that up as a, as a suggestion or a, or a discussion point for this discussion meeting of the committee. <coughs> Mr. Meyer. So, <coughs> about the point of sleep hygiene, and you could say the same thing about diet and childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. You could say that changing foods in cafeterias, changing vending machines, makes no difference. Because if you just educated the kids in schools about a healthy diet, we would all do it. But clearly, 
that has not been a solution that has been supported locally or at the highest levels of government. We have tried to educate ourselves out of the childhood obesity epidemic for more than a decade, and it's recognized that it doesn't work. So I guess getting back to Howard's original point, I'm not sure, though, though I think at, at one time or another all of us have said we buy the research, that it's evident in terms of what we've done as a committee. One of the most interesting studies to me was a German researcher who looked at mid-sleep point across the German Republic. And it's the same time zone there, so the television programs all end at the same time. You would think that if we based our decisions on when we go to sleep on cultural cues, that everybody in Germany would go to sleep at the same time. But what you see is that sleep times get later as you go to the West. Because to a certain extent, we're all still animals and we still are cued to the sun. And again, I think that we can say there might be other solutions to this. I don't think any of the researchers or advocates, whether it's pediatricians, whether it's sleep researchers, have not considered that. Right? I mean, as a, as a physician, you usually advocate the least difficult, lowest cost intervention first, and then you go from there. So, you know, I've gotten many, many contexts about why this will change lives adversely, and I, and I do not ignore those, and I do not take those lightly. But I think that, for me, it doesn't seem that the best solution or the most effective solution will best be just to tell the kids to go to sleep earlier. Um, I think that's a, 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 I'm, I'm a little bit of a mischaracterization no, I'm, of what I'm saying. No, no, I'm, yeah. but I'm saying, I'm saying that <clears throat> Doing individual actions, I don't think will be the most effective. You have argued that they may be more effective and lower cost. So we'll take different sides there. Um, this is very reminiscent to me of the arguments about sleep and hours on service in medical training. And again, for decades, people going through medical training were sleep deprived and everybody knew they were sleep deprived. But again and again, they were told by people who had gone through the training, I went through it, you can do it too. I went through it and you need to be sleep deprived because someday you will be sleep deprived as an attending and you will need to be able to make decisions. And the culture supported it and the people who were in the system supported it and the people <coughs> who were actually subject to it, like our students, accepted it because that's what they were told they needed to do. And it was only after a few you know, high profile tragedies happened that any change was made. And people accepted you are, to a certain extent, human animals and you have these biological needs. So for me, um, you know, the biological needs, the, the things that we've heard from doctors, pediatricians are the most persuasive. And again, as far as buying and adjustment, I'm not sure that when this school committee, and I wasn't here, when it changed the school start time from 8.30 to 7.30, that they looked for buy-in. I'm not sure that they went to, to, I'm not sure they went to faculty members and said, we're going to three-tier busing and your start time is gonna jump earlier. I'm not sure they talked to the athletic director, I'm not sure they talked to the golf team. That was a painful change made under budgetary pressure. Why we can't do something in the other direction based on the needs of our students, even taking into account the difficulties that families will have to go through during that adjustment period is not clear to me. Anyone else like to add to that or comment? You know, I, I think the other thing, the way you started with your remarks, Andrew, is sort of what's the problem? I think. For me, I don't think that's really the right question to ask. The question is, you know, what are we here for? We're here to educate our students the best way possible. I mean, we have a high-performing high school. Why have we instituted new teacher evaluation programs? We have a high-performing high school. Why have we looked into new curricula? We have a high-performing high school. Why are we promoting additional AP classes? 
we have a high-performing high school. Why do we work on improving our professional development for our staff? The answer is because, not because there's a problem, it's because that's what we do, is we try to have the best possible school we can. The, it's not an either-or equation either. I mean, in fact, it's, it's strange. Some of these either-ors, changing the schedule doesn't have to cost the budget any money. A lot of the either-ors are things which will cost us an enormous amount of people. Say things like, well, until we have gotten foreign language and <coughs> instrumental music back in the grade schools, we shouldn't look at the schedule. It's like, well, it may be a long time before we can look at those things from a financial standpoint. You know, pigs may fly sooner. But, 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 but we always look at our schedule because that's our schedule. It's something we make, something we do. Um, and the research for me has been really clear. One of the most striking ones was that at the Air Force Academy, Freshmen, first year, first semester freshmen, who they randomly assigned the class. Half of them had their first class start at from 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning. The other half from 7 to 8.50. And there was significantly better in all of their <coughs> classes across the day for the kids who started at after 8 o'clock. And I, you know, I, when I hear the arguments about the other things, the other hygiene and stuff, you know, I'm sort of struck by, well, here we have, and about parents who need to motivate their kids better, here we have a highly motivated group of people who've self-selected for an incredibly rigorous academic experience, okay? I mean, these are not people who were forced to go to the Air Force Academy. <laughs> these are people who wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, and they knew they'd be getting up early to do all sorts of things, and they knew this. So these were not slackers. These were not people who do video games late at night. These were really the best and brightest kids around and highly motivated. Half of them did better than the other half by a measurable amount and in all of their classes throughout the day and it was the half who started an hour later. And so, so for me, I say, I'm completely convinced that the start time matters <coughs> And I'm also completely convinced that all this other stuff matters too, but we don't have to do one thing at a time. It's very much like um, what, what Alden was saying about the food. You know, we have health programs at the high school, really good health curriculum. They talk about a whole lot of things, including talking to people about how to eat. We had a spiffy presentation last night talking to parents and children about, you know, the developing teenage brain and how to avoid messing it up with substance abuse. We, those are all really important things. That doesn't mean we should drop our other interventions that we do to encourage health and academic wellness. Um, so I don't think it's an either or thing. I think it's the wrong thing to say that. I, don't, I think it's the wrong thing to say, what's the problem? I, and so, so really, I saw my response is that I think that rather than asking what's the problem, the question is, what can we do to make our schools better? And the answer isn't, let's pick the one thing we can do. The answer is, let's pick the things we can do. And I, and. And, and for me, one of those things would be a later start time for teens. Yeah. So I, 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 sure, I just wanted to allow I don't think, I don't mean to present it as, well, if we just tell the kids to go to bed earlier, <coughs> I'm not saying that at all. I'm, I'm actually approaching it from an educational standpoint. We teach our kids about nutrition, we teach our kids about exercise, we teach our kids about substance abuse. Do we teach our kids about how to get a good night's sleep? Mm, actually, we do. It's going in the health through, curriculum. Going through all the, you know, <laughs> so maybe that needs to be emphasized more. They know not I'm also them. not saying that, that kids are slackers and that they get what they deserve they don't go to bed early. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, based on the reading that I have done and based on the experience that I've had as a, as a human animal, mm -hmm. I know that sleep is a complicated thing at mm -hmm. times. You know, so you can't just say go to bed early. You can't just say this or that. There are a lot of other factors involved. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that the start time change, which is, has lots of little things that are attached to it, and which may not be able to happen until 2014, you know, yeah, let's say. So I'm saying, so let's say we voted on next week to change the start time, mm -hmm. and it can't get implemented until 2014. 
So we're just gonna, what are we gonna do for the next two years for kids who are having trouble sleeping? The same thing we did for the last 30. But well, what I'm saying is can't we put together a program that would mm -hmm. probably yeah, do sure. something to help the kids? That's, that's what well, I'm saying. And I think we're doing that. I think actually my kids come home with their wellness things saying, oh, we just learned today and amongst right. other things that they should be sleeping a little later because in the morning. Because it's also an evolving <laughs> field of research. Right. You know, there's certainly lots of things going Absolutely. on all the time because it's a relatively new area of study for a lot of people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to make responding to this. You point. Oh, okay, let's go ahead. Go for it. Okay. So, so d just to come to your point, so we teach them about nutrition. Mm -hmm. They're going to make the choices they want to make. But what we role model in the schools is putting out um, nutritional food and changing what's in our vending machines. Mm -hmm. We um, um, teach them about exercise, what they do on their own. We have no say over. But we make sure that they have the programs available and that we try to involve kids in sports and all that. So we are role modeling what we need to do for them. We have teachers who role model running, running in a uh, marathon. Um, so when it comes to teaching them about sleep, I think we need to role model for them the appropriate time, f how, to, how to appreciate what their, their mm -hmm. teen bodies need. I don't think we're role modeling the right thing by asking them to get up at the hour that we're asking them to get up, especially the kids who have to get on a bus and are there way before the school day starts. Just wanted to say that. Good point. Right. Mr. Flynn, um, I will say, Andrew, I do agree with a lot of what you're saying, and just to respond to Ms. Pick right now, that I mean, it's we can say we can look at our role as a school because we set that start time, uh, but we. One thing that's not being role modeled, one thing that, that kids do need more experience with is on the other end of the clock, which is what do you do to power down at the end of the night? And with the amount of media, and when I talk to parents of teenagers and they talk about the cell phones and the video games and the things that they're plugged into, there's enough research to say how long it takes for kids when they've been looking at a screen to be able to power down their brain to be ready to sleep. And when kids are texting, even when their parents think they're up in bed going to sleep, uh, which has been reported many times that these are issues that I think kids do need education on, and that's, uh, that's what I believe Andrew's telling us, that we need to also consider that end of it. It's not just about start time. There's, there's a multitude of factors around sleep that we need to educate children and the community on as well. <clears throat> Two points I want to make. Um, one that I've said before, I'll say it again, which is, and, and I'll just say in the beginning that people have said that uh, when I make these statements that I'm representing teachers when I say this, and I'm not, I'm, I do understand as an elected official that I represent constituents, but one part of being a school committee member is overseeing the, the entire district and listening to those that work within it. Their opinions matter just as much as our constituents. And when we're hearing from the administrative, administrative team that they want their energies and efforts going into a different direction, when we're hearing from many teachers saying that this is not something that they see as a priority right now. Um, that's something I think is important to listen to. With regard to the student data, I know people are trying to say that that wasn't, uh, trying to poke holes in that, saying that's not, that wasn't done well, that's not good research. Um, that wasn't research. What that was was not an empirical study. That was an opinion poll trying to gather students' opinions. and. I think that's fair to ask someone. If you ask, I think kids do understand what it means to get up earlier or sleep in later. They understand what was being asked of them. And when they say, when the majority say that they want to keep it as is, I think there's something there. We can't poke holes in that saying that it wasn't done with the right kinds of questions. We didn't have a statistician, statistician looking at the data. I think it's important to keep that in mind. And the final thing I want to say is that we're hearing from constituents now uh, more and more who are against this change, not because it's an inconvenience, not because it's, it's going to make their afternoon or their dinner plans more complicated. Um, it's going to provide or represent a financial hardship for many families, families that rely on child care uh, from older siblings or cousins or neighbors. And we, I've heard specifically we've had a few come forward, but more talk behind the scenes because they're not comfortable presenting their financial situations or their hardships uh, out in public like that. But when they talk to me and I hear the stories of people who are going to be struggling as families who are trying to work multiple jobs because they don't have as much money as other people in the community have and they're struggling, reliant on the childcare that they have available, when that goes away, they don't know what they're going to do. 
And I think we owe it to them as well to support them. And that's a, it's a very real situation that I take seriously. And that's a, a huge factor in me thinking about um, not supporting this church. I guess I just want to follow on something Mike said. I mean, one, one thing that I've been coming back to is um, when we hired the, the superintendent, we basically tasked him with spending some time to go around to all our schools throughout the district, really spend time in the schools, and come back with a list of priorities. And he came back with a list of priorities, and now we're basically saying, you know, we know what your list of priorities are, but we've got, we've got a different priority, so this is something we want you to focus on instead. <coughs> um, and that, I think, is a little problematic. Um, the other is kind of a kind of a bigger picture issue, which is how as a school committee we decide. I mean, there's a lot of things that can uh, improve student performance, smaller class size, a longer school day. How as a school committee did we decide this was going to be the issue that basically seems like it swallowed the school committee the last six months? Um, I don't know, just food for thought. Like how we, as a school committee, we, we decide which issues we're going to really laser in on and how we decided that. If it's based on student performance, why that's the thing. Partly because it, it does keep coming round and round. Uh -huh. Because we have seen the research that makes it seem more than reasonable to be thinking about it and to be asking about it. And just like one of these times we have to make a decision and uh -huh. then be done with it. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry for how long this has taken. Mm -hmm. um, I think we probably probably I think we didn't go about this in the most efficient way in terms of how to make a decision um, and it certainly has gotten in the way to some degree from from um, the superintendent's priority list which is um, not a good one we have a lot of things that we need to focus on here um, so I, I mean I, I think I think that is is the focus now just because we, we have to make a decision and be done with it mm -hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't make the decision well. And I think that um, it's not too late to, to go, to just step backwards and to um, kind of reformat how to make the decision. Um, you know, we're, we're learning too. I mean, this, is, this, this whole school committee process is always a learning process, the best way to make decisions, and I think that changes over time. I think there probably was a time when decisions got made with, is, as Danny was saying, without telling everybody. Um, but I don't think that's I don't think that's what the community is <coughs> selecting us to do. Um, at some point, we do have to make decisions finally. But um, I am all in favor of of um, hearing from the community and, and all of the constituents and stakeholders, and then making a decision. And um, I I do think that some amount of buy-in is important. Um, I mean, to answer your question, I think that's why it's up now. And, and it's like, you know, if we just say, okay, you know what, this this is this is too hard. Let's go focus on everything else that we need to focus on. It's only going to come back later. <coughs> we have to get to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, the, the sooner the better. I, I will say I, there was a, a, a constituent who has a couple of times in public said, you know, if this were meant to happen, it would have happened by now. I, I couldn't disagree with that statement. Well, I think that hard decisions require a lot of work and that, that if something doesn't get decided easily or quickly doesn't mean that it's not worthwhile and I, I think <coughs> that um, I just you know could come up with any number of examples of things that people work hard over over the course of history not just here in Northampton School Committee um, that were worthwhile because they got fought for for a long time and, um, and everything is meant to be easy. Mr. Meyer? Um, I just want to say that despite all the, the hot air that this committee has expended that our teachers and our administrators and our superintendent still do so much more so that you know I sometimes get that comment or I've gotten that comment from constituents like you're spending so much time on this and there's so much else that needs attention well th all those things that we're trying to attend to our administrative team and the superintendent our teachers are working on the educator, eval the educator evaluation tool is being implemented um, you know new professional development initiatives are being implemented so the district is moving forward I mean, I, I think that sometimes people in seeing our discussions think that this somehow mirrors what's going on day to day in the school system, and it doesn't. I mean, I, I'd agree with Stephanie that this is, a, this is an issue that's difficult. Um, one of the things that we came to 
was that this was supposed to be an issue or a, a change that we were going to move forward without cost. We've just gotten notice from the state government that we're going to have mid-year cuts. So we're looking at real dollars lost in this district. And again, the things you talk about, class size, professional development, um, those are initiatives that cost money. And that's something that we as a school committee have faced de facto over at least the past three, I don't know how long we want to go back, that we haven't had money for those initiatives. So I think that this is one that we are looking to for that reason because we're trying to do something for the district to improve student performance that might not involve additional resources to spend it on. Mr. Moore. Yeah, and I've thought a lot about this question about why it's taking so long. And, um, because, I mean, I wasn't even aware of it as an issue. Um, and I found out that it was going on. Okay? And um, long before I was aware of it as an issue. So it's been a long time. And I, it, for me, it really has, it, it seems like it's a really good analogy because it's one I think we've now reached the other side of was the secondhand smoke thing, which took 20 years or so in terms of you know public bodies like this discussing you know smoking in the schools. Um, pretty much everywhere across the country, it took a long time, a couple of decades. And that's a much simpler deal. That's a much simpler deal than the school schedule, okay? And because, you know, remember, or think about it, you couldn't, first of all, you, you couldn't get smoking out of the schools because teachers needed to be able to take a break. And you couldn't get students not to smoke because some students really needed to be able to have a cigarette. And that's, so that took the first quarter of the 20 years. Then the next quarter of the 20 years, and, and there was also people really raising serious questions because, you know, lung cancer is complicated. And, like, I just had an uncle who died a couple of years ago who never smoked a cigarette in his life. So you can't tell me that cigarettes, you know, are so the only cause of lung cancer. What it has to do with it is it's a really simple deal. Right. Lung cancer is much simpler <clears throat> than the effects of a later start time. And so is emphysema. And, and the, the solution is much easier than the scheduling of our district. But it took 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's an inordinate amount of time because you have to deal with all the people's concerns. You have to deal with the concerns of the restaurateurs who, when the Board of Health asked them to shut down their smoking areas, <coughs> you have to deal with some serious, legitimate concerns. And so what it has to do with it is, I don't think we should worry about this. This could go on for a long time, and that's fine because it's a tough issue. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's tough precisely because it's gathering more and more evidence in support of needing a later start time for teens. And the other issues in terms of the scheduling are all real and aren't going to evaporate either. And it's about reconciling all of these. And, and um, that's why it's not going to go away with a vote or not a vote, just the same way as the effects of secondhand smoke didn't go away with or without a vote. Right? They continued on. And so, so I, don't, I, don't, I think the having it last a long time is a good thing because people raising concerns is the beginning of discussions as opposed to the end of discussions. Discussions take time. It's all right. I think it's an okay thing. Are there other comments or discussion? Ms. Duvall. <clears throat> At one of our meetings, it was um, Superintendent Salzer started and said that the research is undisputed. We'll start there, and then we can have our discussion. I'm kind of confused as, as to why we are Howard's point of cigarette, though off the <laughs> subject, awesome. it makes a lot of points. It's the same as how long it took for the air controllers and the amount of sleep that they got and the medical. It's just we're changing a culture. But when it needs to change because of circumstance, <laughs> scheduling, we did it. If we can, I, I guess I really just don't understand it. To me, it seems very simple. Doing something can optimize one third of, of our student body's potential. Just just changing the start time. And from having a child who I saw the difference in her personality, and you start to add it up cumulatively, 15 minutes here, and that's an hour and 15 minutes at the end of the school week to just get the change, get this extra sleep, and it really does affect personalities. And if you're somebody that it doesn't affect, then it really wouldn't matter to you. But one of the students here stood up at the mic and said, it doesn't affect me, and he was against it. I never fall asleep in my first period classes. I usually fall asleep in my third or fourth period class. The irony of, of, of his interpretation of it. Um, 
I think that we need to model our behavior and say what's important. And if the research is essentially undisputed, we had people from Smith College from their sleep center come over and talk to us about it, that we should just change it. We should just change it and say, okay, here you go. There, I mean, we've done it for bus scheduling to make it three tiers. We've done it for money before. Why can't we do it just because it's right? Other, uh, other folks want to? So essentially, you know, we, we were at a point where there were two, um, two proposals under consideration. That's now been somewhat complicated by the fact that you f we feel the need, or you feel the need that we need to actually negotiate a piece of that before we can move forward on those two. Um, so, do you have a sense? Uh, so that that's going to be beginning as part of the overall negotiations. Is that the, the sense? Well, or is um, it will it be a separate discussion? Or what's the? Uh, Here are my thoughts on this. Uh, as our two most popular proposals are really impossible right now until we do the collective bargaining and really unfair to vote those before we do the collective bargaining um, we're obviously going to need some more time um, and in fairness to involving more people there's been a number of requests from the community to form a committee um, the school committee knows where the teachers and the administration stands but the school committee may want to form an ad hoc committee with community members and volunteer teachers who want to be a part of the committee and maybe take some more time to create proposals that would be accepted and maybe create more buy-in from the within our organization uh, also you know we've heard the offer from mr. Zimbalist who's an expert at creating surveys that he would help us to create a survey that we could again send out to the community and have updated information from our students from our parents from our teachers and I think we should accept the offers from the people who have been volunteering over and over again to help us do this. So um, I think what makes the most sense is that we leave the start time as is. Obviously, we don't have a palatable proposal to make a change right now. We create a committee, get more proposals, ask uh, Mr. Zimbalist, Mr. Zimbalist if he will help us gather more uh, statistical data. We enter into collective bargaining. Uh, it's my hope that we will finish our collective bargaining by June 30th. Um, I know it's a tight timeline, but I'm still hopeful. Union president is smiling at least. <laughs> uh, and that's my recommendation on how we move forward. Um, I'm not sure, Ms. Duvall and Ms. Peck. Um, you can go first. Okay. Um, so I, I was having some of those same thoughts um, when I was talking about how we haven't been very efficient. We heard we heard the suggestion about having a um, a committee that involves school committee and um, staff and community, and at first I wasn't too supportive of that. And now I wish that I had accepted that proposal more openly. And I, I think it all makes sense so long as, as a school committee, we're clear about what the intention is. Are we forming a committee to come up with a proposal so that we can do a later s start time at the high school well? Or at the end of it, are we still going to be debating whether or not we're changing the start time at the high school? Because I'm all in favor of having that committee if we're all in agreement that we want to move in that, or if the majority of us are moving in that direction. But to have a committee go and do all of that work, because th there's already been a committee that did a lot of work that says why it makes sense. But to me, it's, okay, we've made a decision that we want a later time at, this, at the high school for all of the reasons that we've discussed over the last many years. Now let's really vet it out. Let's, let's look at tardiness. Let's look at sports. Let's look at Smith School. Let's look at all the, you know, the after school meeting with teachers. Let's look at all the things that we have to look at figure out the best way to do this, but the end result should be a later start time at the high school. Because otherwise, if they do all of that work and they come back to us and we say, not sure we like that, let's not do a later time at the, start, at the high school, I think, I think we lose credibility and I mm -hmm. think that we lose a lot of the um, support from our community in terms of wanting to participate in committees. That would be my concern. Mm -hmm. You got some on my hands. Uh, Mr. F Ms. Minnick, who hasn't spoken yet. Um, I agree that there should be, if not unanimity, then at least a majority of the school committee people 
voting for a specific charge for the committee, but my recollection is that we instructed the superintendent to do something. His understanding of it was one way, and mine was the same as his, and yet there were several members of the school committee who remembered those instructions very differently. So to some extent, I'm, I'm going to say right now, I'm happy to have a committee, I'm happy to have them look at things, but the other members may outvote me, but I will not vote to have a committee that will come up with a proposal for a later start time for the high school. I want a committee that will investigate the issues and present to us our options because I think it's our responsibility this, as the school committee to decide whether the benefits of this later start time outweigh any costs to anyone else, whatever those costs are. And that's where I stand on the proposals that are in front of us right now. I have some serious difficulty because I am loath to go against the recommendations or wishes of our administrative leadership team and superintendent, and I'm also extremely reluctant to do something that may benefit some portion of our student body at the expense of some other portions of our student body and their families. And finally, I would love to believe that Northampton um, <coughs> can be the leaders in this, that we can set an example and, and show that this can work, but I think that it will be much easier to accomplish for our district if there are other districts in our area that are looking to do the same thing in the same time frame. And for that reason, I would love to see us establish some kind of a group, whether it's real people sitting in a room or an online chat or lists or, or whatever it is that involves some of the other communities around us, some of the sporting, uh, some, of the, some of the districts with teams with whom we compete in sports and so forth. So we can approach all of this in a considered and thoughtful manner that makes it more likely to succeed. I'm not going to argue right now with the researcher, although I think there are some people who will argue with research, and we've seen some of those emails come to us. I also um, am not going to say that there aren't other things that we should be doing as well to improve student performance, and I, I can only imagine that there might be another group that that with the, with the energy and the tenacity of the supporters and proponents of a later start time uh, it, that would come to us and say, the science is there that's shown that uh, there's a direct correlation between music studies and math performance, and you all should be offer you all should be requiring music instruction at all grade levels every day. It, how do we respond to that? I can't argue with the science. I don't want to refute the research. I'm not a professional in that area. But it, there are so many things that people could say, and I think that that's part of what Andrew was talking about, and in some respects part of what Daphne was saying at the same time, that there are a variety of things that have an impact on student performance. And I have to tell you, there are just intrinsic differences in people. That's why you look up around the table and you don't see 10 people who have the same face. We're all different. I have my, I'm getting all excited and off, off track probably, but my husband wakes up at 6.30 in the morning and wants to go to bed before 11. That's just who he is. And left to my own devices, I would stay up until two and sleep until after nine. And I've always been that way. Not just when I was a teenager, but when I was a little kid and now as an old lady, same thing. All my life, I've always, <coughs> what can I say? I mean, so, people are just different, and there is no solution to this that's going to make everyone happy. I think our goal is to do the best thing we can for our students, the most, the, the best thing that we can for the most families in our community, to look for ways that we can improve student performance, <laughs> But I have to go with what I said from the very beginning, that the superintendent did not list this, as someone pointed out. This was not listed on the superintendent's 
entry checklist, plan. his entry plan of the top 10 things that he thought needed to happen to improve student performance in our district. He's only doing this because we've instructed him to do it, and the only reason we're doing it is because some people have brought us the research and asked us to please pay attention to it. So I'm, uh, again, I think other people could bring us research and ask us to pay attention to something else. I'm not saying that their research isn't valid and that their point isn't valid. I'm just saying that we need to be cautious. We need to do this because we think it's the right idea and we need to get together and talk about that and figure out whether it's enough of a good idea that it's worth our time and effort and not just do it. But I hope that the charge to a committee is to investigate it and not come up with a proposal to do it. Mr. Flynn? Yeah, I too am not comfortable saying that we're just going to put this in place no matter what, um, just so that a committee doesn't do all this work and then feel like it doesn't go anywhere. I think we could just make that very clear from the beginning that this is still up for debate and the decision to keep it as is is still on the table and if people know that going to the committee work and they go through all that work and they come back and it turns out looking at all the data they've collected the new survey that's been vetted and and gone through and still says two-thirds of the students don't want the change and we end up saying you know what we're going to keep it as is that they know that that was an option and I guarantee there are people in this room knowing that would still say I still want to do the work and that's fine as long as that's clear but we all as a school committee and community need to be clear that that's what's going forward, that it's not a done deal. And I think that was, I don't know how that happened last time, because I left that meeting too thinking that this was not something we were all supporting at a late start time. And um, I mean, it needs to be, we need to have that very clear that the option to keep it as the same is still on the table and will remain so. Yeah, I was just gonna say, especially given the, the budget news we got in the last few days, I mean, I don't see how we can say to a committee, I mean, I'm all in favor of a committee and I'm all in favor of a uh, later start time in principle, but how we can say we're going to implement whatever plan you come up with. I mean, what if what if it means cutting teachers because it's going to cost X amount of money? I mean, we, we don't know what they're going to come up with. So, I mean, what's going to be the best charge, obviously. What? It, it couldn't cost more money because, I mean, we could, we, we could, but what else? Any committee we appointed for charge anything, charge the only thing we can tell them is it can't cost more it money. It wasn't my thought that <laughs> charging a committee with um, um, with coming up with a proposal. It was uh, my thought that a committee was going to be looking at all of the questions of concerns that have been <coughs> asked and that, they can that, that needs to be looked at, so that we understand what the consequences of a decision would be. Why not have them come up with a proposal? I, mean, I think that's what they wanted, right? Well, that's what it would have to be. In the That is my thought that we should charge a committee coming up with proposals for us for you to review. But these would be proposals based upon looking at all the various concerns that a schedule change would do, as opposed to coming up with a proposal and then having people bring their concerns. It would be about looking at all the concerns that have been identified and then from that making a proposal. Because I, mean, I think that's the, the direction that matters here. I think, uh, you know, people in the room have been asking for a committee for a few months, and uh, I think that there's energy and desire to do that. Um, and they would like to take this problem and uh, offer some proposed solutions. Um, uh, since we, we have another meeting coming up on the 13th, would there be time for the formulation of what this committee would look like? And who the members could be and bring something like that to the school committee for the 13th to approve or appoint or uh, I'm sure what is there a, people have thoughts about what process would be used to put this committee together this minute. <laughs> not, I have another comment but not that not, okay. not the answer to that question okay well um, although I could I could expound on that if you like um, but <laughs> My my comment is Plenty time till two a.m. <laughs> I am not. Yeah, I'm I'm awake for a good while yet. But everybody else is asleep. Um, my point was not that the committee should not bring us proposals. It was that the committee should not presume that it's a foregone conclusion that we will accept any of them. The, the idea is that we retain the right to decide whether we're making any change to the school start time for any reason at any time. I like the idea of a committee, and I like the idea of getting 
some empirical data on how Northampton sleeps. I think that would be useful <laughs> for us to uh, help figure this stuff out. You can make note of mine right now. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. It's in the minutes, I think. So It'll be in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you have a sense of what the composition of the committee would be? Whether it be one that would be appointed by the, by the school committee, would it be appointed by the superintendent? I'm not sure. I believe, according to our bylaw, our new uh, charter, we do get to appoint the committee. Uh, <laughs> certainly, we <laughs> get to appoint the members of this body to the committee. But I, in terms of, I'm certainly open to that. If you'd like me to do that, I can work with the superintendent to, to come up with such a thing. I think that's what the charter tells you you have to do. Okay. <laughs> I read that part carefully because it, it used to be the It bounced back to me already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said it bounced back to me already. Uh, well, I'm happy to work with the superintendent to come up with that committee and, and bring it back to you at the next meeting to, to okay. announce who that will be. It's one thing to form a committee. It's another thing to charge it. And I, that seems to be probably the more difficult part of it right now. I agree with you, and I think it would be important to come up with the charge for the committee before you solicit volunteers. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in terms of the charge for the committee, then, uh, I don't believe that's my role in the charter, but uh, <laughs> no. do, you have, do you have a sense of that? It's hard for me to be objective because I know what I want the conclusion to be. Already. That's, that's not <laughs> um, so. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, I think that this isn't the whole thing, but I think part of what what a committee would be doing is looking at all of the consequences <coughs> of what a late start time at the high school um, would would and gender and figure out how to um, respond to that. So if, a, if, if, if people have questions about what will this mean for sports and leaving classes early and, you know, being home in time, you know, to still have dinner with the family, let them go, you know, some of them go off and figure and really delve into that. If the um, um, question is about um, how will students have enough time to meet with teachers? Are teachers going to be willing to stay later or, you know, to go ahead and really talk to the high school teachers and find out what they're willing to do? Would there be time for kids who, you know, would they be for school or after school and in between sports because we actually have teachers who are also coaches? H how does that work? And let them look at the logistics of what all that's going to be and all the different topics that have, been, have come up. And they probably know the topics at least as well as we do at this point, if not more. Um, and figure out if there are answers to our questions and solutions to the problems and ha how to make this fly. Um, and it might be that there, there are problems that they can't come up with solutions for. Um, and then we have to weigh those as well. Um, but in terms of coming up with a proposal, uh, first, first of all, their work is hindered because as we said, we're not we're not negotiating here at the table, but some uh, some of this discussion might have to do with what happens in negotiation. <coughs> we don't know. I mean, this is a separate topic. We don't know where that's going to go. Um, the committee is not going to understand what our finances are. We don't understand what our finances are for next year, um, <coughs> and what other decisions we might have to make. So, uh, to start with, they could start looking at some of the some of these issues some of these topics that have already been raised just to and start meeting with the, the people who are, um, that those decisions would impact like the teachers and the sports and things like that. And I'm rambling at this point. Ms. Minnick? I think that um, just as I want to be respectful of a lot of other people in this discussion, I want to be respectful of the time of the people who have already so much time on it and brought us research and who presumably will be some of the members of this committee to be established. I really think that we need to consider, consider their time and their efforts in creating a timeline for this and I wonder if, 
to me, it makes most sense for us to enter into negotiations and see how things are going there, and then perhaps appoint a committee and let them begin looking at some issues with the hope that at some point we would have an answer out of negotiations for what our and by then we would have some but budget information but but as you just explained it it seems to me that we would that they would be spending time in a place they've already spent time if they were to start in January investigating some of these issues because they've already <coughs> seen these issues and looked at them and, and understand what some of the concerns are about sports and stuff like that I mean I, I don't think those, I don't think that the times and dollars and issues are going to change appreciably between now and May. Um, I just wanted to clarify something. This committee should not be made up of all of the start time proponents. This, this, this committee has to so, be an objective but, group. But, um, I'm, and so I'm assuming that some of them will want to be included. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and what we're asking them to do is different than what they've done. We're not asking them to come back with research about why a later start time would be a better thing to, for, for students. Um, but I do think that the committee needs to be made up of, of um, an objective group, uh, or is it, you know, together <laughs> some objectivity, um, because otherwise you're, you're asking leading questions with pre presupposed kinds of answers, and it, it, it's hard to feel have the community feel like we've gotten objective responses to our concerns. Um, <coughs> but the research is undisputed. Uh, that's not what we're No, I'm not oh, talking I about that research. That. I'm talking about if we have the committee looking into um, how teachers are going to work mm -hmm. with students, that it shouldn't just be the people who are for a, um, a later time talking to the teachers who support them. You know, it, it has to be uh, much more broad based than that. Um, but it should be people, I believe, that start that um, believe in this, the later start time who are going to want to be able to be putting the, in, the interest should in and everything them. else should definitely include them. But I mean, if you start to because it's to find an answer to the problems, to all the solutions and all the nitpicky details. Well, if you have somebody who doesn't even think, I mean, I don't think you would want somebody in that committee going against the grain, especially since it's not a foregone conclusion. Well. So that would be for you and the superintendent to figure out how to make up the committee. So we don't, I don't know that we have to figure that out here to make sure that, that they can do the work objectively. But the other thing that I wanted to respond to Lisa about is, um, um, is that they, they can start doing some of that work without touching the whole issue about mm -hmm. elementary schools. Again, I'm just concerned about people's time and efforts and I just don't want them sitting around saying, uh, talking about all the philosophical issues when it turns out that they can't really deal with something. So I don't, I don't think the charge is anything philosophical. I think the charge is to come up with a list of um, topics that need to be objectively um, um, researched in terms of how we could logistically make this happen in Northampton. No, no, so no. It is most philosophical and it's, is this a good thing to make happen in Northampton? And what are the benefits as compared okay, to the costs? I, I disagree. I don't think that's the charge. You say it, it. I hear the charge. Sounds like how do we make this happen here? Yeah. Well, and that's not. What I, I, I think the I charge is to look at. Shouldn't make this happen. To here. look at the concerns so to see. Needs to decide. To look at the concerns to see where the issues are, how it can how they can be addressed if they can. I don't think we're asking them to look at whether or not this is a good choice. I think that's going to be for for us to to mm -hmm. determine. That the people who have done this work. They're, they're already philosophically convinced that this is a good thing to do. Yes. Okay, they don't need to spend any more time looking at that. That's correct. Nod your heads wrong if I'm saying <laughs> the wrong thing. <laughs> no, I understand that, but when I say philosophically, I mean, is this a good choice for Northampton at this <coughs> time, given all of the factors that we have? So maybe you and I are not disagreeing, maybe we're not on different sides of it, but I, 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 I do want off. to be very cautious about how it's worded. I think we are disagreeing. I think so. Mr. Shapo. I would just suggest that you know we could sit here and say, go investigate these consequences. But that's kind of preloading the question. I think you want these survey entries, whatever that's going to turn out to be, to be something that identifies from the community standpoint what the consequences are and the issues that we need to investigate. Maybe the exact same things that we've already talked about, or it may be different, but we don't know. And I would say, let's take up the offer of people who are experts in that and, and let that kind of 
guide what the ad hoc committee then goes to investigate. Mr. Moore. Yeah, I, think, I think that's exactly right, that, that you need to have a survey that's not starting at the back end, like our previous ones, which said, here are three proposals which do you choose, but rather say, tell us what factors need to be considered as we make a proposal, and how do we weight those various factors, and that sort of thing. And then, and then the next thing, which I think is to, what I was listening to you to, <laughs> and it sounded to me like something like this. I'll try and say it a third way and see if it is what you were both saying. That you want to make sure that the final balance of everything comes out positive. And you want to be, res we want us to be responsible for that. And what you were saying is you want this committee to be doing present this, this ad hoc committee, not this committee, this ad hoc committee to be presenting sort of a best way that they can see <coughs> later start time in, in its interface with all these other considerations. And then that would then be presented to us. And so what you're saying is you want to have people who are who believe. who believe that we should have a later start time and we'll work to figure out how you can make everything else work. Right, as opposed to saying to hell with the rest of it, that they're gonna that they're gonna work on figure out how that can actually work, and then present that to us and see how we if how if, if how it balances out to us. Uh, it, is that is that an accurate statement of what both of you were saying? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so that's coming close to what I think the charge to this committee, this ad hoc committee, would be. I feel happier if it were charged with making multiple proposals if it okay. felt that that was yeah, appropriate. But the, right, but, but beyond and again, that, I think weighing, good. I think what Andrew was saying, weighing what the results of a survey show is being But I guess what I'm, concerned. My, my point was to, wanna, say, to say that perhaps it me, makes sense <coughs> to wait to form a committee until we've started negotiations, seen what budget may look like for next year, mm. and done a survey. I was thinking the simplest thing would be, because the most likely thing is that the school day stays the same, at least through this year, and just go ahead and have the com whatever this ad hoc committee is working with the current school length, school day lengths, because that's the most that's the most likely scenario, at least for a short while, and then uh, again, given our financial constraints as well, that's the most likely scenario, and um, move forward from there. I don't know. Just that survey, Mr. Mr. Flynn. I just think one, one thing to keep in mind is, uh, as a reality check, I guess, is this is not, I mean, many of us are probably experiencing deja vu right here. I know being on the curriculum subcommittee, we dealt with this separately, had people present things to us. And what often happens is these pe people go out and do this work, uh, whether it's teachers, administrators, community members, and they bring things forward. We have this discussion and we can't move it forward because there's enough variables um, that are against it that we we feel like we can't move it forward, so it goes back out, get more information, comes back here, and we did it again. This is the third time now we're, we're presented with this information. We're saying, all right, we need to have another committee to go out and look at this data. I mean, at some point, we have to recognize the fact that this is just really hard, and we may have to face the fact that we can't, we just have to vote it up and down and just see where we land and then stop with the back and forth because we can forever keep going back and having other committees look at other variables and lift up this stone, lift up that stone. But what's going to happen eventually is we're going to come up against the real hard things, which is there are some direct impacts that are hard to ignore. And, and that's, it goes against, and all of us are like that. We want to represent all constituents. And so this comes up. And I'm just putting that out there just so that if we're going down this way, having another committee, that people need to, at some point we need to say, all right, up or down, let's, let's put this to rest. I totally agree with you. This no is really, really hard. <laughs> okay, this is really hard, but I think that's actually the reason to keep working on it. I mean, I think perseverance in the face of difficulty is actually one of the prime values we want to present model for our students. And, you know, I think if, if it's like, this is really hard, so let's just stay with what we got, that turns you into a champion for a current system and schedule, which has really got a lot of problems. I mean, there are elementary buses which arrive late every single day. We don't address that at all. There are elementary buses which arrive even later after school, which we don't address at all. You know, that's just at the elementary school just with the buses, okay? There's lots of problems. Um, we have a current long block schedule at the high school, which a huge uproar amongst the student body back when it got changed from a short block. 
huge uproar right now when people have heard there's some talk about possibly adjusting the long block schedule amongst the students. Huge uproars about the long, the reason, that, the reason people are looking at changing them is because, well, maybe they're not the best we can do. The reason there's an uproar is because people know what they got and they're afraid they're going to lose it. But, but what I'm saying is, and that's fine, but that be, should be the beginning of our discussion. And I think to be put off because this is really hard, and sort of, we can't vote it away. In other words, what we, all we can do is continue to live through it probably forever. I mean, these are the kinds of issues that you know, don't go away. It's not like we can just set it in place and then walk away and it'll just spin merrily forever. You know, it's not like that. This is, this is, you know. No, but I think there's something that when you vote something up or down, I mean, we, we're on a school committee, and I can say, having been on for six years now, that there have been years where I have a sense of what's going on with the curriculum, what's going on with the budget, what's going on with the different things happening in the school. It feels like for the last six months I'm on the elected high school start time committee. And, I'm, and I, say, I say that kind of lightly, but kind of not. Because there are major things happening in education in Massachusetts. The new teacher evaluation system, the common core curriculum, um, amazing things happening within the schools, and a huge budget crisis that we're facing. And we're not talking about any of that. And, and that's the thing that scares me. Is I, when people ask me, how are things going on the school committee, the only thing I think about is the high school start time. And, that's, and it's important. And I think we've given it a lot of attention. But I feel like, in some ways, we're, we're taking our eye off of huge things in this district that we need to also have our finger on. We need to know more, we need to have discussions about the teacher evaluation system, about the common core, what's going on with the curriculum, what kind of prof professional development are teachers getting to be able to institute this new curriculum effectively. These are things that have a huge impact, way more than sleep. And direct instruction and curriculum are, are the cornerstone of education and, and we're not talking about any of this stuff. And so when we vote something up or down, it doesn't mean that the problem goes away, Howard. But what it does mean is that we can start also focusing attention in other areas. And I worry that we're not doing that as a committee. And at some point, we're going to be surprised and caught off guard, either budgetarily or with curriculum or something. And I worry about that as a whole curriculum. So I'd like to see us move forward on this at some point. All the more reason to send this to committee so that we're not spending our time right. doing it here. And, and you know, one thing that I always tell my kids is hard is not impossible. So just because something's hard. And the other thing is that those who want to want something <coughs> find a way, and those who don't find an excuse. I'd like to have people on the committee who want to find a way. That's what I'd like to see um, so that they believe in it and believe that it is possible to do it. And then we'll just get the best scenario, hopefully, to be able to vote on. But I don't understand really, is this the best we can do? Why we are ignoring the empirical research that is peer reviewed? Uh, is peer reviewed. I mean, I looked it up years ago. Okay. And I also have another. Sure. Thing. All right, the extending of the school day, and I know we said we're not going to discuss it out of not negotiating in public, but. I have questions about it. I mean, I have questions, is it philosophical? Why we want to extend it is only because of the um, busing schedule that we're trying to accommodate. Um, because some of the um, teachers and a principal that I've spoken with has talked about, you know, squeezing everything into a day and whether or not, um, you know, the extra 20 minutes also isn't just for our scheduling. It also helps the students and then it helps the, the tempo and everything else. I mean, if we're going to negotiate it, don't we have to put a charge forth that, um, you know, we're looking to extend the, the school day? I mean, you're just going to go and, I mean, is it just going to be negotiated or are we going to be able to say, well, we believe that this and because we believe this, we're going to see if we can work it out with you. And I do agree that it needs to be done respectfully, but how can we ask them to negotiate it if we haven't made a decision to um, do it or at least why? I mean, is it just the scheduling of the bus or is it also philosophically that we could use that extra 20 minutes to, you know, for instruction or for recess or for tempo or for whatever, for the kids, which is what we're supposed to be here for, is for the kids. Do you want to respond to that, <clears throat> Ms. Minnick? I respectfully submit that we're verging on the discussion that should be happening in executive session as strategies for negotiation. But do we philosophically no, want to extend the school day? He yeah. wants to do no. what he, he's going to do what he wants to do, but that's I, just my take on the thing. I agree with you. The only comment I want to make is that extended learning time 
is probably the most well-researched thing in education right now, and there's uh, plenty of information on the benefits of extended learning time for kids. Um, so I can bring that forward, and we can. Okay. There's, there's so much on it. Well, I would agree with that, and I think that if it's because of because that we need to, that's the only I support it. it. Well, actually, it's learning. been it's been touted as as the scheduling so that the bus works because we have buses coming late and after school, and, and that's what is out there. It a actually lot. helps that too. Right. But the primary reason is to benefit student learning. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Glad about that. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, I guess I'm, I'm I'm clear on my authority to appoint the committee. I'm still a little unclear on what the charge to the committee is. You're kidding, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's too kidding. <laughs> so. Um, <coughs> Clear on. Um, do we have a sense? Want to take a stab at that? Or whether, in fact, yeah. Yeah, let's name a committee and let them charge themselves. No. <laughs> do the best they can to. And the other, the other thing I just want to remind people is we didn't. Um, tonight was a discussion. We weren't actually taking any votes. So we were pretty clear we wouldn't be taking any votes on things. So um, that's the other area where it gets a little bit. We can um, refer something to committee and have you name it without taking a vote. That's uh, refer I, I, I this whole subject. Could be wrong, but I also think that a motion can come up in any public meeting and if seconded for discussion could be voted upon. I, I think it could be, uh, provided it was couldn't have been anticipated forty eight hours in advance. So if that's if that if meets that criteria that this was not something we were anticipating. Take a vote to name a committee. Okay. Well, certainly, you don't need a vote. I guess yes, I, I, am I just what I'm trying to get is a consensus. I still don't feel that I have a clear consensus on the charge for what the. Uh, Which is why I think delaying a, a, a motion and a vote is is reasonable because I think that would give some people some time to draft a suggested okay. charge the, for the committee, and we could then debate that at a future meeting and then decide the timing. Of a committee to decide the committee? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I will be no part so of So our next no. meeting is on December 13th, which is not that far away. That's next week coming from Thursday. So maybe the, by then we can all have done some thought, and I'm sure we'll hear from some constituents about what this committee could be doing. I hope we do. Could they, could they develop proposals for a later start time at the high school? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Could we just wait until next week? Suggested charge. Suggested charge. Okay. And then, so we'll take that under advisement. <laughs> Thank you. For next week. Okay. So uh, I would um, be so bold to suggest a charge to go along with uh, Mr. Bourne's charge. Uh, I think we should find out what people want. Let's find out what the teachers want, what the parents want, what the administrators want. Let's find out the voice of the community and what they want, and then let's build proposals to represent the wishes of the community. Okay. Yeah. Um, research is undisputed. Okay. No. no. Um, okay. So, uh, is there any uh, additional discussion then this evening? And we'll. I, I guess I would. I would. I'm going to um, uh, just say a few words about what the, the superintendent just said, and, and I'm going to bring it right back to the very beginning, because Howard started off by saying, you know, maybe we should be sitting around talking about um, the benefits of a later start time. And I, I think the benefit of the later start time goes to Andrew's comment, which was it's about sleep, because changing the start time to 8.30 or 9.30 is about gaining more sleep for kids. And so, if we can get more sleep for kids, then we can realize some of the benefits of student performance because kids will be better rested. But what I've also heard is that um, if kids aren't participating in sports and if uh, class sizes are larger and not smaller, if professional development isn't being offered because of budget constraints and after school help isn't available because kids are getting off to other activities, then student performance suffers as well. So um, if the benefit of the later start time is more sleep, 
with the outcome being better student performance, because I think that's what we're about, then will that negatively affect things in home life like dinner time, which <coughs> is also proven to um, make kids happier and um, do better because they're more uh, just, just happier in general. So I think going back to what the superintendent said, which is let's find out what the community wants because it's going to affect dinner time, family time, outside play time, less time after school for kids to do things, uh, might impact sports. Um, those factors are going to be linked to student performance and achievement as well. Okay, as a school committee member, I mean, I, I do hope that, that people have the opportunity to have dinners and I think we should educate and, and the, 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 the um, banners that 84% or 85% of kids have um, dinner with their parents or more successful. But as a school committee member, my concern, and I, and I keep trying to focus, is the academic success of all the students. And when the research is undisputed, the research is undisputed. Do, do and you, I just do, don't think me, that it's... Think I, I'm saying that the research is... No, I'm just saying it's not as a matter... Because I'm not. What I'm saying is that by changing... I'm saying it's not about... Start time, seeing. we might not get the benefit of the sleep which is going to help student performance and if they do get the sleep and it helps student performance because they slept more but then other factors are now negated then it's a net I can understand that but I'm saying no it's not gain. just the sleep and it's so not just the hearing sleep. from the community hearing from the community <coughs> and seeing what they want might not be a bad approach right but it's not just the sleep it's not so that they can sleep more. I think it's so that they get more aligned with their biological and their, 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 their circadian clock and the rhythm so that everything else works more smoothly. And that's what the research has stated. And I have seen how it, it matters and how it works and how a half an hour matters. And, I, and the students that it matters to, it really matters to. And for the ones that it doesn't, then that's great for them. But I mean, if there's two out of three students that it doesn't matter to, I still, care about the academic success out of, of that 33% that, that is going against you're it. You're making two different points. Well, he said it's sleep, but I don't think it's sleep. I no, think that it's more that's aligned. Not, that's not what he said. That's not all that he said. What he's well, saying. That's not all that he said. What he, I, I think what you, what you were saying Motion is that adjourn. if, what? Motion to adjourn. That's not debatable. I'll right. second it. Okay. Well, oh, interesting. We have a motion to adjourn that's been seconded off, okay. on the table. Kind of kidding, but uh, <laughs> you withdrawing? The I was. Motion? I was trying. Okay. So the motions was. I get to finish my sentence. Okay. Yeah. So I think what you were saying is that uh, we could give the kids the advantage of sleeping, but there might be unintended consequences at the other end of the day. We need to make sure that we understand what those are. That. Is that correct? And I think that's what the superintendent was getting at because when they start talking about that amongst themselves and at home, those might be some of the things that are identified, and they might want to try to work through those or offer suggestions on how they might be able to make the changes and still move forward with a, with a change in the start time to get more sleep. I because I do lunch. believe it is about getting more sleep, because if we start at 8.30, we're hoping that the kids are going to sleep an hour later, therefore they would have extra sleep. And more sleep is going to lead to kids not falling asleep in class, whether it's at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. And kids that are sleeping in class, I can tell you, are not learning. And so that needs to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. If we've had you play a tape recorder at night while you're asleep, who do you learn then? So. <laughs> Does sleep always preclude learning? I, I think the, um, I, I think we're beginning should to have digress. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I think so. So, I, you know, we've had the discussion. We're going to come back uh, at your next meeting um, with uh, with some suggestions for this, and, uh, and we'll appoint something moving forward as well as uh, the other tracks that we've talked about with negotiations. Um, uh, the next item on the agenda is new business. Is there new business? Hearing no new business, uh, I will entertain a motion to it. Anyway, we have future um, business. And do we have to discuss our bu the budget thing, which just we just found out about with in the last 24 hours? 
Can we have a re brief report on exactly? I'm not prepared to give a okay. brief report on the budget information that came out today. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, that's the only new business I could think of. That yeah, and we. That's all we, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about it today and we don't have any concrete yeah. information we, okay. for you, right? Yeah. So um, the only thing that's, I mean, the agenda describes what the next meeting schedules are, uh, future uh, meeting. Yeah, there's dates are. Okay. Yeah. It says to be determined on rules and policy, but I believe our date is the 19th at 1. one. Yeah. Okay. So the rules and policy committee will be meeting on December 19th at 1 p.m. And, uh, but and I believe B, where it says capital planning, that's supposed to be budget and property. Budget and property, okay. Right. And so the date on that is the 20th at 4 o'clock, I believe. Is that correct? Right. And then uh, this full school committee will be meeting again next Thursday, December 13th. Great. Is there a motion to adjourn? Some moves. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> a motion, Everybody second. Has to go.